I would really love to spawn them and document that for you guys. I really am looking to sell all of them. And here is my Neolamprologus Leloupi breeding pair and they get food all day long off it. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be doing my September 2021 fish room update tour. So let's get straight into it. So the first tank getting an update this month is this one and it is my Neolamprologus Simulus tank. This isn't on a sump system, this is on the newer rack and it is just filtered by two filter sponges you can see at the back there. I have had these guys in this aquarium for just over a month now and unfortunately I haven't seen any spawning activity. I did honestly think I would see some fry by now but that hasn't been the case. There is one dominant similis in this aquarium that dominates the other one. That doesn't necessarily indicate that that's a male and the other one's a female. So I am starting to get a little bit concerned that I have the same sex in this aquarium, but they do sometimes behave like there will be some spawning activity hovering above the shell. And there are some slight differences in the event of both fish in here. So I am still hopeful that the smaller one is a female and the larger one is a male. But yeah, I did honestly expect to see some spawning activity by now. Uh, these guys are a shell dwelling cichlid from Lake Tanganyika. They do look very similar to the more commonly found Neolamprologus multifasciatus, hence the name Similis. But yeah, when I first put these guys in here, I did a video on how you could create your own shell dwelling cichlid aquarium. Not a very inspiring uh, aquascape, I must admit. But in that video, I was trying to show you guys how quickly they would rescape their aquarium. And over the course of about a week, we started to see some shells moved around. There was some digging activity, but nothing like you see here now. Basically, the middle of this aquarium has almost they've dug pretty much to the glass, to the bottom. And they just have a, a pit that's two foot long by about one and a half foot wide. Anyway, hopefully, guys, we'll see some spawning activity from them soon. I would really love to spawn them and document that for you guys. Uh, they aren't that common in Sydney, especially when you compare them to other shell dwelling cichlids like Multifasciatus and uh, Neolamprologus brevis. We'll see how these guys go over the next few months. Hopefully we'll get some spawning activity. If we don't, I'll try and source some more so we can spawn them in the fish room. Anyway guys, on to the next tank. So the next tank getting an update this month is this one and it is my mixed community aquarium. It also has way too many fish in it, more fish than I would like to keep in a tank this size, but my hands being forced by the lockdowns in Australia, I'm unable to sell fish for the time being, but they're only gonna be like this for hopefully just one more month. So in this aquarium, we've got some Kawenga Golds. They're from Lake Malawi, and they have a yellow body with black barring down their sides. They're the only Lake Malawian cichlid that I have in the fish room. The other cichlids in here though are Gelidochromus fragani as well as Ventralis tritica. So all the fish in here have bred for me and all their fry are in the tank with the parents as well. The Gelidochromus fragani fry that you see at the bottom of the aquarium hugging the sand bed, they've been spawners in this tank. Now one of the reasons why I am showing you this aquarium this month is because one of my subscribers, I believe his username is ethdog, pretty sure he might have, be into crypto with a name like that, maybe he's into ethereum and good on you if you've got some of that because it's, it's pretty expensive at the moment. So he requested to see some footage of uh, my Ventralis tritica and that's why I'm basically showing you guys this aquarium. So the interesting that thing that happened with the Ventralis tritica though in the last month or so is that when, before I added all the Kumanga gold fry and ventralis fry to, in this aquarium, I had one dominant male ventralis tritica, and he's the one on the right hand side of the aquarium. He was always displaying to the female and was the most dominant ventralis in this aquarium. The other males in this tank never colored up, they just remained silver. However, when I added the Kawenga Gold and Ventralis Fry into this aquarium, a lot more cichlids were added to the aquarium, and that meant that the aggression from that Ventralis male was spread amongst more fish. Having that situation in this aquarium enabled another Ventralis male to start to color up because he wasn't always getting bullied by the Ventralis male that was the dominant fish in the aquarium. Now, because that dominant, that dominant Ventralis male has so many other fish to chase around, his time is preoccupied with all the other cichlids as well, it enabled the other ventralis male to color up. So I have one ventralis male on the right hand side of the aquarium and one on the left now, and they both compete for the female ventralis in this aquarium. However, again, I don't want this many cichlids in this aquarium, and I really am looking to sell all of them. Looking to sell the breeding colony of Coenga Golds, I don't want them anymore. I want to get into other cichlids, as well as the ventralis tritica. I love them, they're beautiful colored fish, 
They are quite interesting to watch as you can see them on camera right now shimmering trying to get the attention of the female ventralis in this aquarium but i just want other cichlids and i need other tanks really for grow out i've got another breeding pair of regani so i don't really need this breeding pair i want to try different types of cichlids so hopefully in the next few months once the lockdowns ease in sydney i'll be able to sell off all these guys and here is my neolamprologus lelupi breeding pair this pair has done very very well for me i'm really thankful to have them and uh, they actually have spawned in the last week. I've been documenting that spawning and progress over the last week, recording daily videos of how the fry have been going. And you can see them here, uh, progressing from eggs to wriggling fry. Now you can't really see it on camera, but the rock on the right, they spawned underneath that. Uh, they've brought the sand well forward and have dug a very big pit on the right there and the eggs were spawned underneath that rock on the right. And I believe over the last few days, the female has moved the fry to the left. You just saw her go into that cave on the left there. And I believe the fry are in that cave now with her there in a more secure position out of sight from me. Uh, but I was fortunate enough with this occasion that she had spawned on that rock on the right. And I was able to film the spawning progress, how that batched uh, developed over the, those coming few days. Unfortunately, because of the angle that I had to look down the pit into the cave, I uh, couldn't get very, very clear footage of the egg's development uh, with my macro lens, un unfortunately, but I was able to get some sort of progress filmed with my mobile phone. So these guys, I expect, will become free swimming in the next week. They are eight days old now, the fry are. They're still absorbing their yolk sac. They're absorbing that yolk sac that is their first bit of food that they're having. So I can see some of the fry still underneath the cave on the right, but the majority I believe have been transported. Well, I hope they have been transported because there is a lot less in that cave at the moment. So yeah, this, this tank's gonna look really interesting in the next few days as those fry become free swimming into the water column and envelop their parents. It is an awesome time to watch your aquarium fish when they're spawning and they've got their fry enveloping them in a big cloud and just seeing that parental instinct kick in with your cichlids. It's just such a strong instinct that they will protect those fry and they won't eat any of them, generally. <laughs> um, I've got another breeding pair of Leilupi in the fish room where the male does eat the fry, unfortunately, but this pair are really, really great parents and I hope I don't jinx it. But yeah, there you go, my Neolamprologus Leilupi breeding pair. Another tank getting an update this month is this one and it is my Gelidochromus regani tank. As you can see, there are a load of fish in this aquarium and I need to get them out. I need to move them out into a separate grout aquarium so the breeding pair can spawn again. Uh, the fry that you see at the front of the tank, they were spawned around March of 2021 and you can see they're pushing the 1.5 inch, almost two inch mark for some of them. Uh, there are a range of fry in here though, there are some smaller ones that are starting to get to the one inch mark and there is another spawn of fry at the back of the tank. However, with my fry, unfortunately, they do prey upon their younger brothers and sisters, their younger siblings. So I do need to get these larger fry out of the aquarium if I want to successfully spawn and raise further regani. But they are extremely difficult to catch. I need, to, if I'm really going to do it, I'm going to have to take all the rocks out and potentially break the bond between my breeding pair that are in this tank. It's actually a breeding trio uh, and um, hopefully get that formed again. Uh, but I, I have to do it because I can't catch all these fry out. They just simply just go back into the rocks and uh, it's just, it's, it's basically impossible, unfortunately. I could probably scoop a net in there right now and catch three or four in one go and keep doing that but that just prolongs the amount of stress I put on the breeding trio and I don't like to do that. The other alternative is to just dismantle this entire aquarium and scape it for a different type of fish and put the Regani in the other rack behind me which are all individual tanks. They're not on some system. So I am contemplating that idea as well. And, um, and in that case, I will obviously have to take all the rocks out and I'll be able to catch all the fry then. But uh, yeah. This tank uh, is, is quite productive for me, but it would be more productive for me if I was to successfully catch all the Regani out of here, because then the parents could raise their next batch of fry out 
uh, in peace without having to uh, defend against the older, older fry that, that are in this aquarium. The other thing I want to mention with this aquarium is how much algae I've left on the glass compared to the other tanks you see in this fish room update, uh, especially when you compare it to the Leilupi Aquarium. I leave the algae on the glass because these guys graze off it all day long. And you can see some of them hanging basically on the sides of the tank uh, in a vertical position, feeding on the algae on the tank. There's absolutely no reason other than uh, algae being unsightly for some people uh, to take it off, so I leave it on there. I also don't have any bristlenose catfish in this aquarium to clean the algae, and that's basically because those bristlenose catfish would absolutely get hounded by the Regani breeding trio in this aquarium. Uh, I don't have many bristlenose catfish which are large enough to defend themselves against the Regani pair, and even so, they would still get hounded and their fins nipped by the Regani pair or trio if I was to put any bristlenose of any size in here. Uh, that said, yeah, the, the algae on the sides of the aquarium is uh, there for the Regani fry to feed off and they get food all day long off it. They can graze off that. Obviously, it's not the only food I feed them. I do feed them on a daily basis, a range of uh, fish foods, but it's great to have that choice in the aquarium for them. They're getting very, very fresh food off that algae and the microorganisms that potentially live in that algae growth as well. So I do recommend you keep algae in your aquariums with Julidochromus regani. And uh, I, as you can see, I don't have it in all my aquariums, but this one definitely because I do see them feeding off it a lot of the time. So there you have it guys, my fish room tour for September 2021. Really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment and subscribe buttons. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.